everybody. Welcome to this live stream, or if you're watching on the replay, you're very welcome too. My name is Nicola Brown. I'm a textile artist living in rural Southeast Ireland. And during this video, I hope to share with you some of my top tips for preparing for a sales event like a pro. So please, please feel free, drop a comment, let me know what part of the world you are living in. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them live on air if I can, or alternatively, if you're watching on replay, drop them in a comment and I will answer them later. So let's just get started. I know this is a topic that has endless permutations. It can be something that is as difficult or as simple as you make it. But if you want to prepare for any sales event, maximize the potential of your participation. All of this actually starts at home long before you actually get to the event. So I am going to have a follow on video and that's going to be what you actually do on the day of the event, how you set up, et cetera, et cetera, and things you can do then. But this particular video is concentrating solely on getting prepared so that you can make the most of you, your, your show. So when I say craft fair or show, it could be a craft fair, it could be a market stall, it could be an exhibition with the sales element, it could be a seasonal pop-up shop, a trunk show, which I believe is more popular in America. It could be an open studio, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm really thrilled to uh, see we already have um, my good buddy, Kim Titichai in the West of Ireland. Hey, Kim, very welcome. And Maria is coming from Southern Australia. So it's great to see uh, people coming from different parts of the world to watch this stream. So the first thing that's important to identify is try to select an event that's going to align with your business. And by that, I mean, if you are selling a very high end product, for example, you may not want to do an outdoor market. That doesn't mean that an outdoor market isn't good to do, but it may be that it's not the best place for your product. Likewise, if you have a product like handmade soap or something that's a lower ticket item, beautifully made artisan product, a market, a seasonal market outside or in a marquee could be exactly the place that you should be. So it's important to identify which event is for you. And I have a few things that I say to myself about all the work that I do. And three words simple, natural, and crafted. And I find if I keep them in the back of my mind and I align things with that, everything, such as how I present my products, what I make, how I package them, the sort of events that I participate in, if I can think of those three words and if the event uh, and my participation fits into those, then it's an event for me. And while you may have the aim of making as much money as possible. That's not totally um, the main focus always for doing events. You want sales, you may want leads for hands-on workshops, you may want online workshop bookings. You might be interested in selling one large expensive piece of art or getting a commission, or you might want to drive people and attract people to your mailing list. Two years ago, I was beside a, a lovely a lady at an art event and she had one painting, one large painting and some small ones. She was very upset that she hadn't been selling much for the first two days. And on the third day, she actually sold her painting, which was over 10,000 euros. So she only needed that one person. So you have to identify what you actually want from an event. It, it may not be that you want say or, or it may not be that sales are your total aim, but you may want leads or to get workshop booking. So do have a think about that. 
Hey Louise, I see you're joining as well from America. We truly are international now, so you're very welcome. Now, once you have identified what your big aim is, um, you may then um, decide what sort of a space do you want to um, do you want to display in? Because sometimes you go to events and it's space only. Sometimes it's what's called a shell scheme. That's where the organizers set up um, walls and a backdrop for you. Companies would come in and set these up like at a trade fair. You may have your own gazebo. You might be participating in a market and all you want is your table. Or you may be doing an event like a game fair where you can hire a big gazebo. So all of these will determine what you actually bring with you to the event. But one thing that's absolutely essential is actually that you are going to need insurance. Almost every single event host, they are going to ask you for your own insurance. So while they may be running large events and they have their insurance, they want you as an individual stand holder and participant to have your own insurance. And so that's something, don't leave it till the last minute. I would recommend that you organize insurance. It's usually very little more expensive to pay for a full year's insurance than it is to pay for a, an individual event. So to give you an example, my friend and I had an open studio and an event here at Clashine in Ireland in August. And when we went to get insurance, it was 200 euros for two weeks or 250 euros for a full year. And that was third party public liability. It, it was, I'm not sure that third party is the correct term, public liability certainly. And it's important just to understand that you need to shop around, but 250 euros for a full year, I can hold events, I can facilitate workshops, I can have the public on the property. I think that's a very, very good deal. And it also covers me if I happen to go to an event. So don't leave getting insurance until the last minute. So if you're looking at this video, I'm guessing that you already have some products in mind that you would like to bring to an event. So <laughs> stock, what to bring and how to price it. That is always a very big question. And it's also important to price everything very clearly. Don't undervalue what you do. And I recommend using swing tags to price things, particularly if they're garments. Swing tags are very attractive. You can have branded ones. They're the sort of things you see hanging in inside clothing in a shop, but you can do very simple ones. For example, I can eco print swing tags and just write the price and what the piece is on that tag. Now, I got a very, very good tip quite a number of years ago from a friend of mine, because you may feel when you go to an event that you want to have some inexpensive expensive items on your stand to attract people. Well, actually, I go down the opposite route. When I attend events, my least expensive item is 90 euros and they go up from there. And what my friend said to me was, you know, you sell a lot more maybe of the less expensive items or you may or you may not, but really it takes a lot of time to make them. So I use a model where I would actually prefer to sell higher priced items, enjoy making them, and I have fewer visitors on my stand because I price everything and the pricing is clearly available for the visitor to see. So it's less stressful for me and it's also potentially more profitable. Now that's something you need to decide yourself and maybe if you're interested in a future video, we could actually discuss pricing. You can again drop me a comment if, if, if that's um, you know, something that would interest you for the future. But certainly my model now is I bring pieces that I'm very happy with. They cost a little bit more to the consumer. I have less visitors to my stand, but this is less stressful and potentially more profitable. Now, you need to consider then 
how you're going to transport your stock to the event and how you're going to store your surplus items. Because I think it's really important not to crowd your stand. Less can be more. So I have found that my favorite way of transporting things now, I have two ways. I use clear boxes with lids and I also use packing cubes. They are the sort of cubes that you would subdivide your suitcase if you do a lot of international travel. They're very handy. I'm going to drop a link to some of these in the video description below so that you can see what I mean. But I actually find if I, if I have certain things in packing cubes, I can then put the packing cubes into a great big old suitcase on wheels and I can just wheel it into an event. And that's very, very handy. And garments, I also put in garment covers. So if you feel you're getting value out of this video already, please just subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. I will be giving regular um, tips and advice about growing the business aspect of your, your craft business. So if that's something that interests you, do please um, subscribe. So let's say you you know what stock you're bringing, you've got your insurance. So the next thing that you need are props. Now, in many events, you can actually hire these. You can order them from the organizer and you don't need to bring your own. And the sort of things you can get would be tables and also chairs. But at some of the more glamorous upmarket events, you can also actually hire display cases, you can hire shelving. So that's something to look into. It can be, it is expensive, but it can be cost effective in the long run and also free up time in your vehicle for when you're driving to an event. So that's something that only you can determine. But the tables that I find the most helpful um, to bring, if you're bringing your own tables, as a, a new person to attending events would be craft or, or party tables. They're the plastic sort of tables with fold up legs, they fold in half, they have a carrying handle and they're easy to buy regardless of which country you live in in the world. So again, I'll drop a link to party tables in the video description below. But if you're doing a, a, an event that's maybe several days long, what I actually like bringing, and I hope I will be able to just show you a picture here maybe. Yeah, here I am and <laughs> I'm just at the very, very early stage of setting up a stand. I have a table and um, I ha haven't put the tabletop on it yet, but I would actually have dismantled tables, etc., and then I would bring them to an event and I would set them up. I like using simple hanging rails for clothing. I now have my own branded hangers, but in this particular um, photo, it's from a few years ago, I have wooden hangers. But try and make sure that all your hangers, etc., are actually the same color, the same shape, the same size. Now, a chair or a stool, in the video where I give my tips for the actual event itself, the setting up day and when you're open to the public, I don't recommend that you sit down at all on your stand. But I do think you need to have either a chair or a stool for when you're setting up your stand. And possibly if you have older people who may be visiting you on your stand, you may need something for them to sit on, but ideally you don't want them sitting down within the space of your stand. So I find that mini steps are very handy. Um, something that's got one or two steps. I used to laugh at them when I saw them in hardware stores or Ikea, but they're very handy because you can stand on them for setting up your display and then you can sit on them when you need a little break. And a top tip for events, aim for a selection of different heights when you're creating your display. And this can be comprised of mannequins, tables, tabletop displays, things on the wall, freestanding displays, et cetera, et cetera. But you do not want to have a cluttered space 
And I advise you to be very, very careful about what actually stays on the floor. And mannequins, for example, a floor mannequin is very, very bulky. And you will only really be able to display one garment, uh, you know, maybe a bit of jewelry or a necklace, etc., on it. Whereas when you have thought about things carefully and you have really considered what you're doing it might be better to have a table with a mannequin on top of the table so i'm just going to show you this is one of my displays so i've got rails i've got a mannequin on the table i've hanging display gift boxes swing tags on everything prices on the wall i've got cutouts on the wall those heads that i can hang the scarves on so my mannequin in this instance is on the table and my gift packaging is behind the rails at the base. You can see the gift packaging there on the right hand side of the um, of that that piece. Now, as well as that, do you need a mirror? Is it going to hang on the wall? Is it going to sit on a table or is it freestanding? So Think about that. If you are selling jewellery, you may only need a small mirror. But if you are selling garments and people are going to be trying them on, are you going to have a mirror on the wall? Are you going to have a changing room? Are you going to have a freestanding mirror, which again is going to take up space? And I do have an image here, um, which I'm going to share in a minute. I find that for me, I have had, at a cost, I have had a changing room made. So when I go to a five day event or a more upmarket event that costs me several thousand euros for my stand, I find it is great to have bespoke things. So here I've got a changing room. I've got plenty of lights. I have an upcycle shop mannequin. I have a plinth with a door for storage metal hooks hanging throws i've got signage which i've installed using sticky back foam flyers on top of that plinth and the command hooks on the wall are great because i can hang things like scarves or i can hang a framed painting etc if i had a a painting or a, a felt a felt picture really is what i mean so decide on your mirror will you hang it Will it be in a changing room? Will it be on a table, et cetera, et cetera? Now, if, if you <laughs> have any of those old plastic shop mannequins, I do have a video which you can check out here on my YouTube channel. And that just goes through a very, very simple step-by-step -step process for upcycling an old shop mannequin to make it significantly more attractive. And I find that's an excellent way of displaying my textiles. And if you actually have any favorite DIY props yourself, please drop me a comment uh, below and it would be interesting to share them. Um, so uh, let's go back and let's see another top tip for display things. I'm not sure how many of you have ever seen these before, but these are what are called bed risers. And I first discovered these in America. A lot of the college towns have these and they have them for sale in places like Bed Bath & Beyond. And again, I'll drop a link in the description below, but this would be for the base of a bed to go in. It rises the bed up off the floor a little bit. And so people in colleges can store things underneath the bed, but they are absolutely fantastic for raising the height of your tables on a stand giving you extra space underneath and creating more interest. So I often like having one table at the regular height, and then I'll make another table a little bit higher and I'll slot one slightly in under the other, maybe at a right angle or one in front of the other, because space is really expensive at the higher end shows and you need to make the most of that space. Don't forget tablecloths. Um, 
again, they need to align with your branding. I had a friend make a tablecloth for me. It's in linen. It goes over the whole of a party table and it goes the whole way down to the floor. So I can store things underneath that table if necessary. Nowadays, I tend to just use my wooden tables and keep everything off the floor because I use that plinth to store extra things. But if you're using a party table, I cannot recommend enough that you have a tablecloth that goes the whole way down to the ground and you can store things underneath it. Make sure to iron it. Do not have cloths with creases on your stand. And there also are some very interesting sort of stretchy, inexpensive tablecloths that you can put onto your tables. I'm going to drop a link for them in the video description. They aren't linen. I like having natural things, but depending on what you are selling, they may be very appropriate for you and they definitely make your table look more professional. So lighting. Lighting is absolutely essential. I cannot emphasize it enough. And I've just got um, a clip on lamp here. Um, this is an old Ikea one that I've had for years. It's actually very good. But I have a whole series of little clip-on lights with bendy necks on them that I would bring to events. And I also have some more permanent lighting, which I've had spotlights fixed onto big boards. And they have holes in the back of the board. And then I can hook them over the top of a shell scheme. Uh, so I cannot emphasize enough that lighting is essential. Um, and if you're going to have lighting at an event, you may very well need to hire a socket. And that's something that you need to check with the organizers. Will there be electricity? Usually it costs in Ireland 60 euros to hire a socket, but it's well worth it because if your stand is well lit, it's going to be attractive and it attracts people to the stand. And I think you need to think about bright and effective rather than twinkly and pretty. I mean, people love having Christmas lights on their stand, um, you know, sparkly lights coming up to Christmas. But does that actually sell work? I think having your work well lit is more important than having it all twinkly and pretty. And if you're bringing lights, don't forget you're going to need extension leads. You always need more than you think you're going to need. And I hope I'm not overwhelming you with all these things that you may need to bring to an event, but it's far better to remember these before you leave home. And I have boxes now, clear boxes, and I just keep a selection of lights and extension needs in them. I keep them under my bed and I can just pop them in the car before an event. And so I have everything I need. Now, how are you going to accept payment at the show? Are you cash only kind of person? Do you use PayPal? Do you use Square or do you use SumUp? I first met Square in America and I was absolutely blown away by it, but it wasn't available in Europe at the time. So SumUp is what I use. I find it absolutely fantastic. And it is important to understand that with many of these sorts of payment, you also need to have a Wi-Fi connection. So you may be at an event where you can log into the organizer's wi-fi but you may also need to use your own cellular coverage so don't forget to put in your phone charger so that you can make sure that you have everything ready for taking payment from people and then you're going to need a calculator you need to decide if you want a cash box for your loose change do you want a bum bag i find that because my items are higher ticket that usually I don't need very much money and I only need to have like five and 10 euro, 20 euro notes. But if you're dealing with things like a lot of items that people are more likely to pay cash for, you're going to need some way of storing that and having different types of change. Signage. Do not forget to have your signs there. Make your your signs simple, it would be my, my top recommendation, simple, effective, and make them visible. So I think I'm just going to go back to, let me see now. I hope, you know, I think there's, there was an image I wanted to share with you. And in fact, 
I'm afraid I haven't got it here. It's an image that has, um, it, it's an image with, sorry, one, just one minute here. Okay, so it's got my logo. I think you should be able to see on your screen my logo, which is my handwritten written name. And underneath it says fine art textiles. So what I like to do at the bigger events where I have a shell scheme or a wall behind me, I order what's called a vinyl cutout for my signs. And that, that um, is something that I can then put on the wall behind me. It's very effective it's just literally the cut out it looks like i've written on the wall so a vinyl cut out is what you're looking for if, if you want to do a big sign but i also have a selection of what are called shop cards and that's something that props up on the table it's a little bit like a picture you know the same sort of concept as a picture in a frame on the table but you've got the picture at the front with your text or whatever on it and then it's got a little prop behind so those are called shop cards and you'll also want to have promotional material so and maybe some clear props to display promotional material inside so when i'm talking about promotional material i'm thinking of things like business cards maybe a flyer with information about upcoming workshops and I find a really top tip now is rather than asking for people to write their name and their email address down for a mailing list I now bring my iPad uh, you can also use your mobile phone obviously and I have it set up so I can just ask the person if they express an interest in joining my mailing list i ask them just to fill it in there and then so literally they gave me their name and their email address and i sign them up to the mailing list there and then it's much more efficient and people are so used to using the internet now that they're quite happy to do that and it's it's easier than than writing things down on paper and thinking of paper i also now bring envelopes to big events and I capture addresses, names and addresses of people. If it's a ticketed event, I actually get them to write their name and address down if they're only if they're a purchaser on an envelope if they would like complimentary tickets for the same event the following year. So I have found this an extremely effective way of driving people back to my uh, stand the following year. So I will just send them tickets, but they've already written their name and address on the envelope and I just put a stamp on it. So there are stationary items that you're going to need to bring with you. Pens, paper, string, I mean maybe you have a stock list, double-sided tape, hooks, clothes pegs, scissors. If you have textiles and iron, I always put a drill in the car and you know different fittings. But some of the most efficient fittings, if you need to hang things on a wall and you can't drill into it, are some of the picture hanging systems. So there's something called purlon. It's a little bit like a thicker version of a fishing line. And I have hooks that go on the top. They can hook over a door, for example, or a shell scheme wall. And then I can hook this purlon, this clear plastic kind of cord onto that. And then I've clips that I can move up and down on that clear plastic cord. And that's what I would then hang a mirror on. And it can be moved up or down on it. So I can position the mirror exactly where I want it to be, or I can position a wall hanging. So check out some picture hanging systems, because if you're not allowed to drill into a wall, they can be very, very uh, helpful. Don't forget now, if you have any questions about this, please just drop a question into the live chat below, or if you're watching on replay, leave me a comment. So I think you've got your stock, you've got your props, etc., but you're also going to need your packaging. How are you going to package everything? I keep things simple and aligned with my brand, so I use craft boxes brown paper bags. I have acid-free tissue paper. My boxes are branded, so I stamp my logo onto the craft box. And just remember again, price everything on your stand, and that leads to the least confusion. 
I am going to have a follow up video to this so you can check out my other videos. And during that, I'm going to go through every single thing you need to do when you're setting your stand up and how to behave at an event, how to get the most out of the event. But something else that you do need to have with you on the day, water, some high protein snacks such as hummus, nuts. Uh, don't forget to bring some tissues. I also think um, it's important to bring some cloths that you can wipe your mirror, you can wipe up any, um, any spills if somebody spills something on your stand. If you have jewelry, you might need to consider bringing wipes, etc. if people are going to be trying things on. If you're at an event where there is a carpet, a little um, rechargeable hoover, a little vacuum cleaner is very handy for cleaning the floor. Um, but overall, I think that there has covered everything that I bring with me to an event. So I am going to prepare a checklist, an event preparation checklist. And in the video description, there's going to be a link and you will be able to download my event preparation checklist if that's something that would interest you. So I hope you've got some value out of this video. If you have any um, tips of your own to share to help make prep event preparation easier, please drop a comment. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Click the bell if you would like further updates, etc. cetera, uh, tips and advice about developing your, your art or craft business. Thank you for tuning in or watching on the replay and over and out until Oops, I see one comment. Yeah, um, over and out until the next time.